cloudy in the morning. Cloudy in the morning. Then clearing. Highs in the upper 30s. Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. This is called Ham Radio Dude, and this right here is a HT antenna. But the thing that's so special about this is the promotion of amateur radio is always to experiment and learn about things. So I made a super slinky dude, or I made a signal stick knockoff, just to kind of see how it worked. And today I want to show you how you can make your own signal stick. And it's very simple. So here's the parts that you're going to need. First, you're going to need one millimeter diameter nitinol wire. Now this has a memory and a 40 degrees Celsius transition temperature. This might not be the best nitinol wire to use, but I did have it conveniently laying around on eBay. If you don't want a super flexible HD antenna and you just want to build your first HD antenna, just make sure that whatever wire you use is one millimeter in diameter. It will come to play down here. So the next thing we're going to need is we're going to need some kind of heat shrink to cover the nitinol. This is one and one sixteenth inch diameter. Did I say that right? This is one sixteenth inch diameter heat shrink tubing with a three to one ratio. It should fit right over this nitinol, nitinol, and of course then heat shrink it. It should look pretty good like you see here. We're going to need to 3D print this part. And this is for the SMA male that's on thingiverse.com slash ham radio dude. Today I'm going to be making a female antenna, so I printed this one, both again available on Thingiverse. And finally, we're going to go ahead and we're going to need an SMA connector. Now this is a BNC to SMA adapter, both female, because today I'll be making a female antenna or female SMA antenna. It's very important though that you have the BNC on here as that's how I designed both of these little covers, if you will. And finally, you're going to need some super glue and a soldering iron. Let's get started. And I should also mention, if you go over to signalstuff.com, KD7BBC wrote an article on how to properly make a signal stick. Today, the method you're going to see is going to be a little bit reduced of a method or an easier method. At least I find it to be easier to make something that would be like a signal stick. And in my experience over the last 23 minutes, it's worked pretty well. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started here. What we're going to do is we're going to cut a certain length of wire. I like to start with about 21 inches of wire, and later on down the road, I'll use an analyzer to cut down the nitinol from there. One of the reasons I bought so much nitinol wire initially was when I found out how the signal sticks were made, I thought, oh, you know what, I'm going to get 20 meters worth of this, make a dipole, and then I'll have a, a retractable dipole. And yeah, that doesn't actually work. After a certain length, these lose their, their memory or their stiffness, if you will. Now that I have this wire cut, the nitinol wire, uh, I need to go ahead and take the end here, and I'm going to use a Dremel to sand off this initial layer, which is very oxidized. Without sanding it off, it's not going to be very possible or easy to be able to solder this into the BNC, as you're going to see here in just a second. Yeah, there it is. I got that Dremel down here. Without it being oxidized, I'm going to go ahead now and set it in the SMA connector or the BNC side of the SMA connector like this. Very cool. I also do want to mention soldering is going to be the most difficult part of this process because soldering nitinol to these connectors could be a pain. I am today going to try a new method and I'm just going to dip the end of the nitinol wire into some flux. That might be too much. I have the whole thing being held up by the USB wire that's charging the camera. So that's great. And I'm just going to let it kind of slide into the BNC female port. And after just a moment of giving it a little bit of effort, it doesn't look necessarily the greatest, but it's, it's in there. By the way, these are experiments and cool, fun things that maybe your local ham, excuse me, your local ham club would want to be involved in. So maybe you bring this up to them, show them the video. Next up, let's go ahead and measure out and cut some of this wonderful heat shrink. Now, one of the things I have not done yet, and I highly do recommend, is getting or making some kind of ball for the top here, because inevitably, it's still going to be sharp and we don't want to poke anybody's eye out, right? So consider a jack-in-the-box ball. I think that would be really cool up there. Anyway, as you can see here, I have the heat shrink going all the way down and goes to the top here where I'm going to cut, and then we're going to use a heat gun to go ahead and shrink this just a little bit. And now with the heat shrink applied, as we could see, it does some super slinky stuff, much like a signal stick would. And all we really have to do is a couple of things. 
Before we actually glue this on, why don't we go ahead and put it on a radio just to see how it sounds, and then we'll hook it up to an analyzer to check the standing wave ratio. Okay, everybody, sorry about this. Uh, my audio went out for that portion of the receive test. So let me just go ahead and hook up uh, that Nagoya antenna again here to the Chicago NOAA weather radio. In, sh in short, what you're going to see is you're going to see uh, barely a difference. Now, I know we're supposed to be vertical. To spare you the super boring details, uh, the first one I cut was about 19 inches, and actually it was too short. And so what I would see was the standing wave ratio was 1.2 to 1 at like 184 megahertz, with a dip on either side, and I want to go longer in order to go down the band. So with that, when you have a too short piece of wire, you know, the only thing you could do is make a new piece of wire and do it again. But not all is lost for that short antenna because I have, uh, well, the ability to use 220. And so I can cut this down just a little bit more and make my 220 antenna. And that's the joy of single stick. I mean, or, uh, excuse me, super slinky dude or whatever. And, uh, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to put on our adapter. When I printed this and when I designed this, I had different SMA connectors on here. And so you might need to scale this up to 104% if you followed the link and purchased these connectors from Amazon. Also, I wanted to point out that if you saw it before as I was pulling down on this cover, basically it was taking the heat shrink with, so I had to reheat shrink everything. That would be an indication that I maybe need to open up the diameter on that cover just a little bit. And if I were to glue, I'd place the glue right here, but this is actually a really snug fit. Again, 104% on my slicer settings utilizing ASA filament. So again, I really didn't show you today how to check for standing wave ratio or anything along those lines. Uh, that's not really the point of this video as much as it was how to build your own signal dude, <laughs> signal stick knockoff. And it's not that I don't support signal stick. I think they do a great job in the ham study community. But it is always fun to learn, right? And today was a good learning experience. I hope this video helped you. I hope you get out and do these things. And if you did, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below. Have a good day. Bye.